This has been nothing but a gift for our show and the network. Let's bring him on, the former Jet USC Trojan joining us. He always brings film and gifts to us. That's right. Even gifts. my wife, last Nuggets. time she saw Mark, commented on your cool look. You're really aging well. Look at that hair. You you that and a backhanded uh, compliment? No, I mean it's look at this guy. You aging do you've well. got you've got you you really pull off the I could Antonio work Bandera's. in Hollywood if I wanted to, but Put I don't some want boots. To. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you do the film breakdown as, as about as well as anybody. You make it very it. consumable for guys like me that don't know what I'm doing and, and don't know what I'm talking about. So the kid I like is I mean, obviously production matters, but the reason I take Jaden over um Drake, it comes down to this. Much tougher conference and a much more consistent performer. And man, I like those legs. And when yeah. you come into this league and you're trying to figure out the defenses, which are really sophisticated, if you can run around it's for nice a little bit. nice to have that. <laughs> you can I run. wish. <laughs> yes. But it does give you a little bit of time to like, hey, I'm going to pick up some first downs, move the chains with my legs. Ooh. I yep. like him a lot. You've got film. I'm really interested in your interpretation of what you see. Well, I think the biggest thing that the scouts and coaches are really looking at, and you, you alluded to it, but is the sample size. He's a five-year starter. So he's got a ton of reps under his belt. And when you watch him at Arizona State, you would say, at least I would, man, that's a really good athlete playing quarterback. Now, that's a pretty good quarterback. This guy can do it at the next level for sure and could be special. And he's a really good athlete. You know what I mean? He, he's matured over those five yeah. years. And even when you saw him play at Arizona State against uh, Justin Herbert and the Oregon Ducks, who should have mopped the floor with the Sun Devils, he, this kid is balling in that game. Yeah. And they got nothing to play for except pride. Yep. And this kid just goes off. And they duel it out the whole game. And, and he goes nuts. And so you're like, hmm, there's something there. Fast forward a few years, he's gotten a little bigger. I still want him to get a little bigger. Yeah. I still want him to put on a couple pounds. Got to eliminate some of those hits he takes. He takes some bad hits. I mean, where you just get folded up like a lawn chair, <laughs> like, oh, my God, like a world star clip. Like, come on, man, you can't get hit like that. Yeah. So I want that to be eliminated from his game. But what I loved, five-year starter, love the sample size, 21 sacks this past year, 47 the year before. Okay. So is he reading more the defense than cutting him, cut him in half uh, interceptions way down uh, having to scramble needing to run design runs way down and he can run. It's not that you're not going to run him, but he didn't have to because he was going through more of his progressions. Yeah. Um, he's, you know, the speed obviously jumps off the tape. He's pulling away from SEC defenders. Yeah, he's a three quarter arm delivery guy. So not over the top. So, it's, but his height's plenty, you know, that just lowers your delivery a little bit. So you, it's something to think about, not the end of the world. Um, but he's got it all, man. 72% completions, 40 really touchdowns. An accurate so thrower. I really loved his production this past year. And then his growth. You know, you show me that big sample size and show me trends. He gets put in a new situation, new offense, plays well. Starts to develop whatever it is. Now, I always go two clips. We beat him up first. We build him back up on the second clip. Like a so, good parent. Exactly right. So, <laughs> good therapist. So... <laughs> This first one, I want you to really focus on his vision and his scope. I think he's locked into a tight end running an out route with a running back running a go route up the sideline. Um, and you got to see, especially in split safeties, these defenders in the NFL are crafty. They're sly. They're slick. These cornerbacks, they got head on a swivel, especially in zone. They're watching the quarterback. They're watching their guy. And they're ready to make you to try and bait you into a throw. I think it's imperative to understand that he's going to start on the left. He's working a seam route and a hitch route outside. We used to call it Haas. You don't want to, you know, overcomplicate these things. Hitches and seams. Haas, easy to remember, right? right, right. So you got a seam, a hitch. The backer's going to buzz underneath it, take away the hitch. He gets a piece of the seam route. So everything's jumbled up over there. Boom. He just resets his eyes and gets back to the opposite side of the field, his third read. The uh, yards after catch, the run after catch this year was so much better than years past and it's because he was much better with his ball placement and giving these guys opportunities to catch and run instead of holding them up with a throw at their you know heel or something like right. that boom he gets tackled I mean these guys are off to the races and that neighbor's kid is unbelievable so he set him up well my my one thing is the deep ball I think he's I think he's got to get like two more yards on that thing yeah two to five more yards and I think with the little off-season program you know maturing into his body He'll accomplish that. So one of the things you said there um, 
is that the Oregon Arizona State game, and, and I'll tell you why that's important. I remember the shootout, that game. It was fun. It was a crazy great game. game. Um, is that I said I did a rant. I think it was yesterday. I said if you look at the last ten drafts, we have twelve quarterback hits. Size is not it because Kyler's small and Josh is big. Where you went to school, Josh Allen went to Wyoming, Mahomes, Texas Tech. The one thing they all have, if they're on stacked rosters, uh, Burrow at LSU, they put up cartoon numbers. Mm -hmm. Or they elevate okay rosters. A mediocre roster, sure. Right. So here's what worries me about J.J. McCarthy. I've seen Jaden Daniels elevate pretty average right. roster at Arizona State. Right. And then when he got a big boy roster, cartoon numbers. Yep. J.J. was not asked to elevate. And he also didn't have huge numbers. Now, someone would say, well, Harbaugh, uh, run the ball. Okay. But it does worry me. I want, in the NFL, you're going to be asked to elevate players. You're not getting a stacked roster. You're not getting Georgia there. Right. And the second thing is, if you get that elevated roster, uh, I'm going to need, you got to give me some, you know, when Mahomes had Tyreek and Kelsey, sure. I get MVP numbers. Is it a reasonable concern that those two things that really are the determining factors on quarterback hits, I don't see them with J.J. I'm a little well, worried about that. You also have to keep in mind, are you going to judge this player on what they're asking him to do or the system overall or versus other players and other situations? Like, how are you going to mix those variables? And it's not an exact science. I feel like uh, you're on, like, deal or no deal or something, right? <laughs> and you know... I got, um, I got a new car, and it's a solid new car, right? Like, I've seen the tape on this car. It's a great car. It's a Honda Accord. It's going to last forever, right? But behind the secret door, you could have a trip to, <laughs> you know, Tahiti with yeah. your family or something or a new house or something, or you could get a toaster. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're like, what do I do? And people just get so enamored with the unknown and what could I do with this guy? What could I mold this to be? And then they drive home from the show or they're really taking the bus home from the show with a toaster in their lap. Like, dang it, I should have taken the car, <laughs> you know? So I feel like that's the quarterback position. That's drafting this position. So you have to understand what your principles are. And if you're okay with Patrick Mahomes running a spread system and throwing, you know, a ton of interceptions because he throws it more than everybody in that system doing what they asked him to do, Okay, fine. If you're okay with J.J. McCarthy handing off the ball 25 times a game, like, okay, well, that's what they're asking him to do. I'm sure some of those were run checks. Now I got to get into the nitty-gritty and figure out, okay, who is this kid? And so I think there's plenty on tape there. And when there's this unknown, this, you know, what's behind the mystery door, coaches think, and just, you got to remember, these guys have egos. They have, like, that juice that got them to that position as a coach. Hey, I'll coach him out of it, or I'll coach him into X, Y, or Z. I'll get him to play the way we need him to play. Our system will make up for whatever he lacks or something like that. Yeah. You see what I mean? So it's, I mean, it's not an exact science, but the kid's going to be just fine. I think his decision-making is solid. Yeah. In critical games, it was solid. Sure, he doesn't have the numbers and, and attempts that you'd want to see, but neither did I coming out in the draft. I only played 16 games. So there was like this mystery allure to that. Okay, can I get him to be the quarterback I need him to be? And so I think if you're asking that about this kid, he's going to be, you know, malleable. You can mold him into what you want. He's clearly a leader, and he has all those intangibles. I think there's plenty on tape to take the kid. So you came out to a team that had a run game, a left tackle, and a great defense. So you had a lot of help. Good special teams. Brad Smith came in, ran the Wildcat. Like yep. we had, we had a lot going for us. Yeah, maybe not as good as the Minnesota situation, which has got everything offensive. Well, offensively, Holy you're, mackerel. I mean, you're loaded. And an offensive coach. You exactly had a defensive right. coach that I always said on the air. Then I'll say it now. Easy, All right. easy. <laughs> Anywho, um, I worry about New England, and I don't care who it is. Mark, they don't have a consistent run game. I got a new rookie coach, defense. New coordinator in Van Pelt. Some of this stuff is what I like, you, by the way. Where you land. Oh, 100% where you land. Like Drake May, I think, is going third. Could you argue, sit him behind Jacoby? Let him sit. I think that school of thought is dead and archaic now. Really? But it, 
it's not a bad idea. You look at a lot of great players. Carson Palmer sat behind Kitna. Mahomes. For your Mahomes. 11 weeks. And you sit behind a guy. But the, the difference is you have to have a real pro. You know, a guy who's solid, has a great routine, somebody you want your young guy to emulate parts of his game and then be themselves, be that special player they drafted when it's time to be that player. But when it's time to be, you know, Kitna and solid across the board, like Carson Palmer could do that. But when it was time for Carson to put on the Superman cape, boom, he did that too. And so you learn from a guy like that and you glean some of the stuff that they have. Just silly stuff like your routine before games. What do you eat the night before the game? How do you travel? What do you wear? Are you a suit and tie guy? Like, what's your approach to all this stuff? And all of that's going to change. And you're going to come up with your own formula that works for you. But if you have a good one in front of you, like an Alex Smith, like, I mean, perfect example, knows how to check the ball down, knows where to place the football, knows how to get in, get in and out of checks, can teach the offense to everybody. Like, that's who you want Patrick emulating. And he does it with a lot of his game. And so, um, I mean, there's, there's something to be said for that. There's also something to be said for, hey, we got a roster. We got to go win now. Like, I'm, you know, I'm the GM looking at my watch like, ooh, Some okay, of we got to make this happen now. And, you know, it's an it's a instant gratification society, especially with the NFL. Let's go. You got a two, three-year window, which is, you know, for a quarterback, totally unfair. You need a five-year run to see what we really are, who this kid really is. Is this the right system for him? Do we have to change coaches? So where you land is just as important as your talent, in my opinion. Penix, a lot of starts. Jaden, a lot of starts. <clears throat> Bo Nix, a lot of starts. Uh, most of these guys have a lot of starts. You didn't. Mm -hmm. um, if I would have given you 32 starts, I mean, Nix has 61. <clears throat> Do you think, Mark, say I look at these quarterbacks and I'm like, man, I could see all of them working with the right fit. And mostly I look at that and I think, They've all got like 30, 40, mm -hmm. 50 starts. If I would have doubled your starts, oh. what would the advantage have been? Well, it only helps your um, time on task, your reps, just more, more shots at those potential uh, turnovers that you don't throw, more sacks you don't take. Like the same way we watched Jaden Daniels grow and not take those sacks and not throw those interceptions and not make critical errors. Boom. That's what you want to see. You that's what job. you're learning on the job. It was my first year starting. I had played three years or three games before that. Excuse me. So 16 total starts is light. I mean, really light. So for some teams that was right there. Just no, I need a two year starter. That was the old. That was the old school motto. Is oh, yeah. I need a two year starter yeah. minimum. And that was like, oh, it's a little light. So 16 games that turns some teams off. But listen, <laughs> we say it every year. You don't have to have all 32 teams fall in love with you. You just need one. <laughs> That's right. And hopefully they're picking early and hopefully you got a decent roster. So I, I was, you know, the, the beneficiary of, um, you know, a team that was picking at 15 or 16 that traded up to five to go get me. So you're 15 or 16. You're right in the middle of the league. You're, you know, a win or two away from the playoffs. That's You've right. got a team that can go. So you had some players. Yeah, so you have a defense that was legit. I mean, they throttled Brady do you a couple remember, times. Do you remember oh, the God. first time in practice you faced the Jets yeah. defense? Well, it was Revis. The next year we had Revis and Cromarty. I mean, to, <laughs> looking back now, it's silly what we did because it doesn't help a quarterback. It doesn't groom a quarterback going one for 15 in a rack of plays in practice because the defense <laughs> is so good. And they're throwing like all these different defenses at you that you've never seen before. Like you want the quarterback to look good and try and build so practice them up. Was tough. But I'm just getting pummeled out there. Like, Oh my God, there's nobody to throw to. Like Revis is running the routes for everybody. What am I doing here? Right. You know, it's, it's hard. It made, it made life really tough, but you kind of learn on the fly thrown in the fire. Who are you? And that was the approach there. I mean, from an offensive perspective, you'd think like, ooh, you might want to get him some completion so he has a little confidence going into <laughs> games instead of just getting crushed in training camp, you know? So it was, uh, you know, we added some talent my second year, quite a bit of it, yeah. um, with Braylon Edwards, Antonio Holmes, Jericho Cotri, Dustin Keller, and LaDainian Tomlinson. Sean Green was our running back. Like, we had a potent offense, so that training camp was a little more competitive. Plus, I had a year under my belt, sure. so I felt a little better. But that first training camp was rough, man. There were a lot of balls on the ground, a lot of balls going the wrong way. So that was, uh, that was tough. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including... 
exclusive behind-the-scenes videos, and more wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.